Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconan, along with Brianna Valeski, and we have Serge Berger on the line. He's a head trader and investment strategist at The Steady Trader. Serge, how you doing this morning? Good morning, guys. Good to be here. Well, we're glad. Pumped, we pumped up about today, man. It's going to be a good day. All right. Before we get into that, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your MarketFi product and uh, how people can participate in that? Sure. Uh, so, so the main product I run is the Steady Trader, which is essentially uh, teaching people how to fish as opposed to feeding them a fish is usually how I, I try to put it. And, uh, you know, my, my approach is very much uh, sort of a combination of top down, bottom up, which stuff that I've learned at JP Morgan and hedge funds I've worked at. Um, so a realistic approach, none of that sort of, you know, green button, red button type of, you know, uh, Voodoo stuff. It's uh, realistic. We look at what matters. We look at when it matters and uh, make trades. So it's uh, for anyone that actually cares about making money in a high probability fashion rather than just like flick ticking around. Uh, I think it's a good deal. And uh, time frames on your trading. You know, it's it's. It, I, I refer to it as swing trading, and I think that's become a very over, overused term over the past few years. Two days to multiple weeks is sort of my time frame, and uh, you know, within that time frame, we try to you know manage those trades a little bit as well. So it's not day trading, but it's also definitely not none of the you know buy and hold longer longer term kind of stuff where your face falls asleep. Right, and it's kind of like the longer you're in it, the better, right? If you get if something happens, you get stopped out. You're stopped out, but if you you know can kind of massage the trade as it goes your way. Well, what do you what do you make of yesterday, huh? You know the market leaning the wrong way going into the announcement, trading near the lows of the session. The word patience taken out, and the market explodes. Uh, how did you how did you play it, and uh, what's your take? You know, I'm always, uh, you know, a person that that tries to sort of, you know, deal a little bit after. It's like I, I try, I don't try to front run anything. Uh, definitely not earnings, and certainly not Janet. So, you know, from my perspective, this is something that I now need to see if we get a little bit of follow through. At least we don't fall apart today. But I think, you know, she played it. She played it masterfully yesterday, and uh, you know, she she took the word patience out. Everyone was expecting that. But then she pretty much turned right around and said, listen, you know, but we're still going to be, you know, patient. So she she said a whole lot by not saying anything or she said a whole lot but didn't really say anything at all in that sense. So I think it's status quo. Remain where we are. Rates are going to remain lower. You know, the Fed knows we're going to remain low. They just have to somehow, you know, feed everyone, you know, from uh, the, you know, corporate America that's been getting angry about the, the rising dollar and stuff like that. So bondholders loved it. Stockholders loved it. Gold bugs loved it. And quite frankly, I think, you know, we should, uh, should be able to see some follow through here for at least, uh, you know, a couple of days, maybe a few weeks. Yeah, a little, well, a little weakness in today's session. Uh, so, you know, how are you playing it? You're looking for a little bit of a pullback here to uh, perhaps uh, initiate some new longs put, uh, or uh, just uh, protect some profits? Yeah, no, I mean, look, I, I, I am looking to get long now. Um, basically, I've, I've went, I went to like 94% cash over the past uh, couple of weeks coming into yesterday, <clears throat> coming into yesterday, because one of the things I always like to focus on is, is sort of what's the structure of the market, you know, in other words, and I've talked about this a lot with you guys before, but basically, if we don't understand what the monetary policy is, what is what is the news and what is the fundamental underpinnings of the markets at the moment, we are basically at risk of fighting the market, you know. And, and so for me, we are closer to a structural shift, i.e. to an environment where we actually see interest rates rise for the first time in seemingly, you know, an eternity. But we are obviously we're not there yet. So I want to watch this very closely. I would like to buy the spies here. I'd like to buy the Russell 2000. Um, you know, which one of those is going to prefer a little bit, a little bit more, uh, you know, on the dollar? You know, yesterday, the S&P up from the Russell, I got some questions on that. It's very obvious. It's because the dollar crashed. So the dollar, dollar crashed, you know, so international exposure, which is S&P 500 companies, didn't look as bad. Okay, let's move in uh, some individual issues here. Uh, Apple, nice run here over the last few days. Uh, what you take on Apple, found the support in the lower, one, right around the 122. Uh, moving up here, kind of right back where we were during this whole Apple of, uh, iWatch event. Uh, what's your take on Apple? You know, I think Apple has, as far as I'm concerned, over the past, really the past few months, it's become much more difficult to trade from my perspective. I would say for the past, you know, five, six months, um, just because it's 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 been trading more choppy. You know, we've had big moves. Obviously, we had a big, nice, juicy move there off of the, was it February, I don't remember, 
the tenth or something, we had a big jump. But otherwise, it's become very difficult to trade, in my opinion. So I think I, I just need a need a, need a, to see it settle a little bit. But there's not a whole lot of exciting news out there that's confirmed. The watch is a bit of a bomb, you know. The the whole um, TV thing is now the latest rumor, but it's not really. I don't know. I you know I don't. I wouldn't want to short it. Let's put it that way. That sounds like what maybe you were looking looking for, yeah, but no. I don't. I wouldn't want to short it. Uh, okay, uh, crude and gold rallied yesterday off the Fed announcement here. Let's take a look at uh, the USO here. Caught a nice bid. Uh, let's see how it's trading in the session. So you think uh, you think we found a little home here in uh, in the crude market? We did roll over contracts here, so the price is a little bit distorted. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your take on USO? Closed right near the highs for the session but giving it all back today well yeah and look it depends on the dollar it's all look at the dollar index today uh up 45 basis points making good uh let's call it uh, three quarters of yesterday's drop uh you know you, the inverse of that is basically, <laughs> basically the uso right or, or, or oil so just watch the dollar it's really all i can you know i keep keep yeah, I keep trying to sort of, you know, make make better trades in oil, but at the end of the day, it's all based on the dollar. So to me, if the dollar can see any sort of, you know, follow through selling here, then yeah, then I think we might actually see some buying in 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 oil. But I, you know, it, it's a one way street still. It's deflationary, and and it's to me, it's akin to, to you know trying to catch a falling knife. So. I'm not too crazy about rushing into this right now. Okay, and uh, gold futures here. We came, par- well, we made a new low for the move and then just sat there and gave you a lot of opportunity to buy it. You think uh, think we're going to rally off this level uh, once again here? Or you think, well, actually, we didn't get to the low. I'm looking at bases, the uh, front month contract. Uh, you had mm-hmm. a low at 1132.30, and then the move that you had uh, earlier in the week was 1141.60 here. So you think the gold buzz can uh, finally uh, get a rally back up to the $1,200 level? Same deal, man. It's, it's you know, what, what, what gold likes to do is it likes to go? Uh, it likes to rally on daily yesterday when both uh, the dollar got crushed and interest rates <laughs> interest rates uh, got crushed. So you know, as long as we remain in a bigger picture environment where where it's deflationary, I have a very hard time seeing gold beginning to bounce any more meaningfully. It just we need to see more than a one day wonder. And and gold has been, in my opinion, very frustrating to trade. You know, over the past 12 months, before that, it was just, you know, one way street. But over the past 12 months, you know, trying these rallies and I need to see more than like a one day bump. And so far, you know, we're seeing a little bit of fall through this morning, but it's yeah, it's hard to really sink my teeth into this as well, you know. Um, it, it's interesting because uh, we just had J.C. Peretz on Eagle Bay Capital, and he, you know, he mm-hmm. says the same thing. If it, you know, if something doesn't make sense to you, if it doesn't have the thesis, if it doesn't have the technical setup, then just get it off your screen and move on. You know, move on to something else. And uh, you're echoing that same sentiment. Uh, do you notice any patterns with stocks that uh, do a split? You have Visa doing a four for one today. Uh, the charts mm-hmm. really don't mean much. You know, Dennis talks about some historical patterns where they have a tend to higher open and then tend to drift lower over the remainder, you know, a little bit of time. Any uh, any take on uh, stocks that are, you know, going four for one split? I know, mm-hmm. that, you know, Apple obviously had to split and went straight up, but uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, you know, great question. Um, I think, uh, so the S&P is within 1% of all-time highs. The Russell's uh, basically made new all-time highs yesterday. So what does that mean? It, you know, a lot of times people make it too complicated. It means that a lot of stocks or at very high prices, like all-time high prices. A lot of retail folks, you know, the U.S. market, the way it works is a lot of retail guys don't like to buy stocks that are expensive in absolute terms. So Apple at, you know, whatever price it was at at, at the time, at 700 800 bucks, whatever, wherever it peaked out, you know, uh, in terms of the old pre, pre-split, um, you know, that was expensive. <laughs> people didn't want to buy it. So, you know, Apple at 130 100 bucks. It's still no bargain in terms of you know the app you know absolute numerical value, but it's better. Starbucks is going to be uh, what was it? It's split. It's going to be what two for one or something? You said uh, Visa is four for one. Right, Visa. But what's Starbucks? I know they they announced a split yesterday. They're going to do uh, at some point. I don't know. Brent's. Hey, it doesn't matter. But even Starbucks, you know, at ninety five bucks, it's going to look a lot better at fifty. 
<laughs> you know? And so that's that's what I find. A lot of people, I get a lot of people, a lot of questions, you know, because I do trade those those big momentum names that we just talked about. But a lot of guys don't like to put that much money on the table. They prefer to buy an option. So it's the same thing. Once a stock then gets halved, they're more interested in buying the stock again, potentially. So to me, I, th- I think I would, I think that's part of the reason why they're doing this stuff. You okay. know, they, you know, the, the, the bankers know this. Okay, that, let's uh, let's move on. This is a lower price stock here. Uh, Rite Aid had some monster volume over the last few sessions. I'm telling you, like blow your doors off volume. Big mm. big call action, and I think a lot of people are, you know. Oh, takeover! Walgreens has got all that cash. Something like that. Do you do you use any kind of? Do you take note when there's big option activity in a stock? Do you do you sure. ignore it? How how do you how do you approach something like that? No, I, I do. I, I think you. I think I think you have to. From a trading perspective, you have to. And if you're a, like a longer term guy, it doesn't matter that much. But but um but Rite Aid, you know, it's it's interesting. It's um been one of those stocks that. You know, I talk to a lot of hedge funds and every, every day, and we've got a pretty good circle of built over the past 15 years of, of guys that are really good. And, and it's one of those th- those names that's come up a little bit, you know, a couple times over the past couple of years before that we never talked about it. Just because it's it's been seeing more options activity and just become more and uh, come more on, on people's radar. I think Rite Aid, you know, the, the, the problem with Rite Aid from an immediate perspective was yesterday's reversal. I would have liked it to see it that close near 830 near, near, near the day's highs. It didn't do that. If it could finally do that at some point, I think you see nine bucks. Um, so that that's kind of how I look at it. I'm not, you know, again, it's not a, a day trading thing. But to me, that reversal yesterday, just like I had some of the financials, was a little bit concerning. So I'd like it to see that it can actually overcome those those highs yesterday before giving a better way to nine bucks. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's move over on, on some other issues here to take a look at uh, lower price stock. Got some good earnings. NQ Mobile here. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, buddy, it was a Citron's the one that's been uh, on that stock. Got the pop off earnings. Do you, do you mess with lower price stocks like that at all? But we do. What, what is? I don't. I don't even NQ, know that stock. What's, NQ Mobile. NQ. NQ. Yeah, NQ Mobile. Oh yeah, there you go. Now I remember this one. You know, I, I I try not to do with too many stocks below five bucks. I do a lot between five and ten dollars stocks in in some of the portfolios. Um, I, you know, th- my my big the big issue with stocks below five bucks, particularly, is 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 liquidity. A lot of times, even if there's a lot of volume, you can still have a guy come in and just blow the whole thing out of the water and get a massive trade out of nowhere. And also, a lot of times there's a you know transparency issue. But I, look, NQ. Like I'm just looking at this right now, very, very, very simple analysis. I mean, you see the tight pattern, right? I mean, it doesn't take a, it doesn't take a hawk to see this. <laughs> okay. But if this thing can sneak, if the, if this, this thing can sneak these one of your terms about four thirty, from my in my world, you know, five bucks is is a good one. So you you have a te- from purely technically speaking, you have a stock that's sort of at a make or break point, right? If if it falls below three, whatever the lows are, they're you know more or less you round them out, they're like three thirty. You know, you might see the bottom cave out, but I, it doesn't look to me like it's one of those stocks. This looks to be like it's ready to kind of coil higher. Okay. You just have to see. What about Tesla? Weak fundamentals. Uh, Mr. Musk has got it back over 200 here, now trading up 201.66. It was, I really think it's interesting when, uh, you know, the stock gets down near the low of its move, which was 185. He had a couple of bottoms there. He comes out, you make a couple comments, you're back over 200. Uh, what's your take on Tesla? <laughs> you know, to me, to me, Tesla is one of those things that that very much like Apple has been very difficult to trade for, for more or less the same time period. I, I think ever since December, this has been a difficult stock to trade. I love what they do and I want to buy it, but I need to see commitment. I mean, look, look at look at the price action since September. OK, all it's done is made a series of lower highs. Right. So if this thing finally, you know, dumps below 185, you know, we might see a flush out. Um, otherwise, it needs to just show us they can actually make a higher high, right? So at least you know get past like those the very least the February highs, which were like what 220 or something like that. You know, get us back above there and show some commitment. So you know that that's kind of how, how I look at Tesla. Okay, and uh, what about the Bobster Alibaba? Interesting here, <laughs> this eighty-six dollar level. Holy smokes! Uh, mm. People looking for the sell-off yesterday because of the lockup of three hundred and thirty-seven million shares. Big. 
big buy, big rip north off the open, testing 86, trading up in the pre-market. I think Dennis might have tweeted out about a buying balance here. What's your take on Alibaba? Do we finally break above 86? Yeah, well, you know, I think that's the question. So I on on that beautiful rally day, what was it, uh, the fourth of March? I actually posted something on Benzinga on the significance of that day. And I think actually you mentioned JC before. I think he he did he mentioned that as well at some point. Uh, you know, and I think that that was from a price action point of view an important day. Now you know it doesn't mean you immediately see fall through breakout. You know, you can see sort of a retest of the lows again, and it kind of did that, but it hasn't fallen apart, even after yesterday's lockup, right? So to me, that still puts a lot of significance on that, you know, big monster rally day, um, what was it, whatever, the 3rd or 4th of March, and, um, you know, it, it needs to it needs to get above 86, it's that simple. As long as it doesn't get above 86, unless you're day trading, it's a gamble, you know? Okay, one more for you here. It's stock talked about uh, consolidating here at the forty forty one dollar level. GoPro. Oh, GoPro! Another one of those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, another one of those uh, things that got hyped up last autumn, and then basically that was it, right? It's a one way street. I, I I see no. Just again, if you, I just I like to look at probabilities, and I like I, I look at a stock here that's just been nothing but pain. Uh, for the past, say, month and a half, two months, even for, like, the day traders. I mean, this thing is trading in such a tight spot. You know, give me some follow-through buying or something so I can actually stick my teeth into something and define my risk. Here, you know, I'm just going to drive myself nuts if I do anything. So, but this is, by the way, this is this gets back to a bigger point, which is that the market has largely been stuck in a very choppy period year to date. I know the Russell broke out the new highs and the S&P spiked here as well, but a lot of these momentum names, they uh, they haven't done much. You know, I mean, look at Facebook. How many times does it, does, does it have to rally and try to break out past the resistance line that it, that it's got? Look at Twitter and and all all those things that are they're technically sound, but they haven't been able to get out of their own way. You know, and I think GoPro is in the same problem. It's the same thing, except GoPro needs to give us one rally data so we can actually do something with it. Okay, final thoughts on the market. Pulling back, big update yesterday. Looks like the 2100 levels being defended in the S&Ps. Hard to find support here after you have a big rip up in the market. Final thoughts on the market, Serge? Yeah, I'm look. I'm I'm looking to buy the spies or like an SSO ETF or something like that, or do some buy options. But I need to see a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of commitment uh, to yesterday's rally. That doesn't mean I have to see it rally above yesterday's high, but I need to see some sort of stabilization, maybe some maybe some uh, consolidation. Uh, if we fall apart today, then quite frankly, I think all bets are off. <laughs> then we're going to go lower because then we might have finally made a, a lower high versus those February highs. But I'm looking to buy as long as you don't fall apart today. Okay, all right. We've been on the line with Serge Berger. He's head trader and investment strategist at The Steady Trader. You can check out his uh, product at marketfi.com. Serge, thanks a lot for coming on. Great input. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, guys. Take care.